Hi, I'm JD, and what we're going to be doing today is a hypothesis test for two variances. So let me read the problem to you, and then you can try it. A researcher claims that the variation in salaries of elementary school teachers is greater than the variation in salaries of secondary school teachers. A sample of the salaries of 25 elementary school teachers has a variance of $7,963, and a sample of salaries of 25 secondary school teachers has a variance of $3,282. Uh, alpha equaling uh, 0 0.05, you remember that's your significance level. Does the researcher have enough evidence to support his claim? So pause the video and see if you can try to do this one on your own. All right, first things first is you gotta state your claim. You gotta state your hypotheses and also identify the claim. Now you're dealing with two variances and variance is represented by sigma squared and so let's just put it in order. And the claim's going to be in the alternative hypothesis. Why? Because it's greater than. So it'd be sigma squared one greater than sigma squared two. Remember what this means? This means that it pertains to one population and this pertains to the other population. Now I'm just listing in order in the problem. So you have greater than. So elementary school teachers comes first and then this. And then your null hypothesis is gonna involve equals. Now you could very well put it less than or greater than. Um, but for some most textbooks, you're going to see equals. In other textbooks, you'll see less than or equal to. So your null hypothesis could either be one of those. And right where the claim is at, claim is right there. Now step number two is you're going to need to do your critical regions. And for that, for critical regions, you're going to use, uh, with this, since it has an F test, you're going to use the F distribution. So the F distribution. Now it looks something like this, but it might actually look something different. Now, in fact, with, with all of these, it's going to be uh, right-tailed. So your alpha is equaling uh, 0 0.05. If it was not equal to, you take half of it. Now, how would you find your critical regions? Well, for the F test, you need to look at your test statistic. So you have step three. Let me write that up here, step three. Because you want you want to see what's in the numerator and denominator. Now in this case, the one that goes on top is always the one that's greater. So the sample size so variances for the standard deviation is going to go on top of, sorry, the variances of the elementary school teacher is going to go on top. So that would be one. And then what's going to go underneath is the one that's lesser, which is second, the variance for the salaries of secondary school teachers. like that. 
because then you have degrees of freedom of your numerator and degrees of freedom of your denominator. And you find both. So on top is elementary school. Elementary school teachers, so it's 25 minus 1, which is 24. And underneath is the variance for uh, secondary school teachers, which is this, and it's a sample size of 25, so that'd be 25 minus 1, which is 24. Typically for F distributions, you're going to have a table in the back. So you look at top, you look at your alpha, your alpha here is 0 0.05, right? So it's going to be down below. Hopefully I'm not scratching things. Your degrees of freedom for your numerator is going to be on top. So it'd be 24. And then you need to see where your where it lines up with degrees of freedom for your denominator, which is also 24. So we see where the two line up. That would be 1.98. 1.98. Now plug these in. So you have. 7,963 over 3,282. Since both these are variances, it's already uh, S squared. So I don't have to square them, I just plug them in. If they were standard deviations given in the problem, then you would have to square them, but here you don't have to. So it'd be 7,963 divided by 3,282. And that's going to be approximately, I'm going to use two decimal places just like over here. So it'd be approximately 2.43. Since that's 2.43, that falls in my rejection region. So since it falls in my rejection region, step four is going to reject the null hypothesis. Since I am rejecting the null hypothesis, that means that I'm accepting the claim, which means I have enough evidence to support it. So there is enough evidence to support the claim that and then you just repeat the, the claim. The claim is that the variation variation, hopefully I have enough room to write it, the variation in salaries of elementary school teachers, elementary school teachers is greater than the variation in salaries of secondary school teachers. And 
that's it.